I know you gonna dig this. Get, get, fu- get funky with me. Everybody, how are you doing today? So here I am in Carnation, Washington. This video is going to be about Kurt Cobain's houses that you may not know about. He had a house here in Carnation, another house in Seattle, and then there's a, well, we're gonna go through it together. I'm gonna tell you, I'm not gonna tell you where more. So a lot of stuff to do with Kurt Cobain that a lot of people haven't seen. Now here we are in Carnation, where he had his first home he ever bought with his own money. I've been to his LA homes, uh, two. Fairfax one and Alta Loma, the abandoned one that I did a video on, both those he rented. And of course, Pear Street, Olympia, uh, the two apartments there, rented. But up this road, it's the first home he ever owned. So up this road, it is a private road. It was bought in 1992, this home by Kurt. And later sold by Kurt Cobain's estate to Courtney Love in 1998. And then she sold the home in 2000. Now this is a private road, but up there you're gonna see a woman walking her dog. Her name is Jackie. And hello, Jackie. We just had a long conversation. One of the nicest, sweetest women I ever met. And she gave me permission to drive up there and take a look at the house. She said, if anybody gives you any trouble, tell them Jackie told you it's okay. Jackie seems to be the unofficial mayor of Carnation, I think, and a lovelier woman I have yet to meet. Uh, so sweet. So here's some footage of me driving up there. And you're gonna see something that's so cool. Outside of the home, there is a giant slab of granite or rock that says Nirvana. And that was put in by Kurt and Courtney at the time when they were living here. They didn't spend too much time here. This is like more like a country home, but it is the first home he owned. So the driveway is private property, no trespassing. And two reasons I wouldn't do that is because it says private property, no trespassing, and I'm don't want to trespass and second of all as badly as I want to drive up that driveway and see the home as a Canadian in the United States I will not trespass because it can be a problem and I can be just you know not allowed back in the country if I trespass so I don't do that now if you were going to come out here to Carnation and find this house it is a private road but so maybe look around for Jackie and get permission it's a long drive in it was near the end. It's about uh, almost a mile in. I don't know. I was driving for quite a while. And so, no footage of the actual house did I get, but I did get to see that rock in the driveway. And that, for me, is pretty darn cool. Did I just say pretty darn cool? Holy Jesus, look at that. Wow. Wow. Oh, you missed it. Oh, there he goes. There he goes. There he goes. There he goes. It was a deer. So, that was a deer that just ran off into the forest that way. That was really, really cool. Uh, I see plenty of deer in Canada. I see plenty of deer in uh, California at uh, Forest Lawn Cemetery. When we see one out in the, I don't, I don't know, it was really cool. I hope it was, yeah. it was a deer. Okay, so it's a little after uh, dinner time right now and it's gonna get dark soon. The video will continue tomorrow. It'd be five seconds for you, it'd be a few hours for me. And we're gonna go next to another home in Seattle that Kurt owned, the second home he ever owned that not a lot of people know about. I'm gonna take a look at it, and so are you. <sighs> I can't believe I made it out of here. This is a trek, this is about 45 minutes outside of uh, Seattle, at least about 45 minutes east, kind of like cottage country, or it looks like just a lot of people do actually do live here year round, but. Would it be the most convenient place for Kurt to just... Uh, apparently, he came here again a few, couple of months before he passed away. And this is one of the properties they did check when they were looking for Kurt. 
but it wouldn't be too convenient to, try to commute every day back and forth if you had to go to Seattle. I don't think so, but possibly people do. All right, and here comes Jackie. All right, so now we're going over to Seattle tomorrow morning. Hard to kind of see the view, but take a look at that view. That's Lake Washington there. Now, if we went up a little higher, say in the house behind me, up on a little hill, you would have a great view of that. So, a lot of Nirvana fans, Kurt fans, when they come to Seattle, they go right to the famous uh, Lake Washington house, the one, uh, sadly, where he passed away, right? That's where, when you think of Seattle, the Seattle house of Kurt Cobain, that's what you think of. Now, I already showed you the Carnation House, sort of, that he first owned, but did you know they owned another house in Seattle before that house? And that was from about 93 to uh, January of 94. And that house is right there. That's it. That's Kurt Cobain's other Seattle house. So about a year he lived here. Kurt and Courtney lived in some um, hotels, especially the Four Seasons here in Seattle. But I gotta imagine that in 1993, they were doing a lot of uh, touring, Kurt, Kurt was. So didn't probably spend a lot of time at this house, but this was his house. And this is Kurt's other Seattle home. So about a year. I think it was March 93 to January 94 that Kurt lived here. It's a great house. And look at that view. I mean, you go up on that, that deck, you're not going to see just that pool on the top of that house. You're going to see over you know, onto Lake Washington. But there it is. Kurt Cobain's other Seattle house. I always wanted to see this in person, and I wanted to bring you along. And here we are. Wow. This marks now, for me personally... Um, the Pear Street Apartments, his childhood home, his father's home uh, in Montesano, I believe it's called Montesano. Um, where else? The Carnation House, Seattle House, Fairfax in Los Angeles, the um, abandoned house on Alta Loma up in Hollywood Hills. So for me, for Kirk Cobain, I've pretty much found all of his homes. I didn't find them. I mean, other people found them too. But I mean, I've been to them all now, which is crazy. This was the last one on my list. Wow. And it is a gorgeous view. There's a nice view of it right there. Okay, so now we're going to go down really far south in uh, Washington State. Well, past Olympia. And two other homes. I'm gonna, I know one I can find. The other one is a bit of a guessing game. I'll know it when I see it. And I know the general area and ad, sort of the address, but it doesn't, it's, a, it's a ghost town, apparently, where I'm going to. But there's a certain home there that has a great significance to Kurt Cobain. And we're going there next. All right, let's go. It's going to take me a couple of days because i got stuff to do with Seattle. But for you, it'll just be a quick little cut. Kurt wasn't really the tortured artist like the sulking, tortured person. Like He was really funny person and somebody was watching this when we were doing the box set the Nirvana lights out box set and they were they were editing it and they were looking at all this videos and they're like you know what I was looking at Nirvana and like all these interviews and you're all, everybody's always laughing like the band is always laughing making cutting jokes and just you know and it just there's something was this, the, the most apparently stupid ridiculous it, the better it had to be really super stupid. It was really funny, like, it was so stupid. Shut it down. Really, dude? Has walking become just too much? Just walk. Like, come on. This building here used to be called Rebar. It's now something called Keys on Main. What the hell's Maine? This is this is Howell Street. Look in here. Look. Look how tiny this place is. You know what happened in here though? You know what's crazy about this place? This building, this used to be called Rebar, like I said. And now it's Keys on Main. But it's where Nirvana had the record release party for Nevermind. And they got thrown out of their own record release party. It was done right here. Now Geffen Records put it on. They weren't used to this sort of thing. 
They thought it was going to be a bunch of local people, you know, meet and greet a little bit. But it became a huge schmooze fest. After two, uh, they played Nevermind twice, and then the band started asking them to play other songs by other bands. But Gavin Rogers was like, well, no, it's for your, it's for your album. Anyway, I believe Kurt and Chris, they got drunker and drunker, probably Dave too. But they went up into the DJ booth and was demanding to play other songs. Then Chris threw a tamale at Kurt and a food fight broke out. Bit of chaos <laughs> and they got thrown out of their own record release party. Hey, we're here to meet the band. Aw, they just got thrown out. Really? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> but this is it. I wasn't sure if it would still be open or not. Rebar, I heard that it closed down and it's closed down. And nothing's in there yet, but whatever's keys on main. Do they know the history of this building? This door looks original for sure. That's the original door from back in the day. Back in the day. Take care of one another. So cool. Music history inside this little building. Look at all this stuff. I want one of those boards. One. It's just stuff that they've taken out. As they're rebuilding the inside to become keys on main. That is nuts really small well it kind of goes oh no oh no it goes all the way back to your right where you see that light on the right so it's pretty big i wonder where the dj booth was hmm sure somebody back in the day who was here and uh well just a few years ago it closed i think but from seattle will write in the comments what it was like inside where the dj booth was i'd like to know that ah i love stuff like this i wish i could go in and walk around the sights the smells So it's this whole building coming to, oh, they're gonna have dueling pianos. Wow, oh, it's this whole, I didn't even notice. I'm so out of it. It's this whole, like I'm just, I'm not out of it. I mean, I'm just so focused on uh, this side where I can see, but it's the whole building. Wow. What do you think? Hey, ear pads, what are they called? Ear pod, iPod, 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 iPod. You're not gonna make it. It's gone. You're not gonna make it. There it is. Let's go somewhere else. So this isn't where Kurt lived, obviously. I'm kind of deviated, but I've got another place that's kind of cool that was not where Kurt lived, but something having to do with Nirvana. And uh, yeah, I've always wanted to see this place. Let's go somewhere else. All right. Just looking, that's a side door right there. I wonder if they got thrown out from that side. No, no. Who knows? I don't know. That's the back door, side door. Let's go closer for a quick, quick second here. I want to document everything I can. Well, looks like a new door there, but that's a doorway. It doesn't even say Nirvana anywhere. Come on. People, Seattle, don't ignore your music history. Kurt was here. Dave was here. Chris was here. Alright, look behind me. Look at that building. Look at that shiny cheeks. What happened? Okay, look at that building. Nirvana recorded their first ever album in there. Bleach. In there. And the demos for it too. This used to be Reciprocal Studios and uh, was an antique store back in the 70s. Then it became Reciprocal Studios. Jack and Dino, I believe, was one of the owners. And picture of him actually standing outside this door this is a weird little building like if you look at it it's like a triangle like that but Nirvana uh, recorded uh, the bleach demo sessions here then love buzz of course came out for sub pop that was their first label and then sub pop said yeah go back and make a full album so they came back here recorded bleach this is on 1988 I believe so they did all of Bleach in here, most of it, most of it. Could have been some mixing and mastering somewhere else, but this is it. I mean, this is music history. I believe it's another recording studio now, but there's nothing that you would know. There's nothing that gives it away that says this is a recording studio. But this is, I mean, what are you doing driving by and not stopping people? Music history, Nirvana. 
their first real album recorded here and the demos for that album Man. isn't that wild I would love to get inside this building but I, I uh, don't even know I think it's called historical way studios now or something but yeah this is it how wild is that Nirvana we're in here Probably came in through this door, bringing their own gear and uh, stuff in through this door. Because back then, they didn't have roadies. They would have been bringing them themselves. I'm sure when they recorded Nevermind in, uh, out in L.A., they didn't have anybody bringing in their guitars and drums for them. They were doing it themselves. After that, things would have changed. I wonder if some of the old uh, mixing boards and consoles and whatever are still in here from those sessions if it is a recording studio again if they just left them behind and sold the when they sold the building to uh, historical way or whatever it's called now if those same mixing boards and things are in there that would be why i love recording studios and i love going in them especially when there's ones that are so much history like robert lang studios i put a link to that below i went in and that's where foo fighters dave recorded the entire foo's uh, album their first one the debut album all by himself Nirvana did a little bit of recording that too. I'll put a link to that below. But this is it. This is reciprocal recordings. This is the building. Wild. All right, now on to some uh, very special. I don't think a lot of people know about this place. But I'm going to show you it. It has to do with, guess who? Kurt. Let's go. I want in this store. I want in this store very badly. to a little town called Bordeaux and it used to be a bigger town it's only about maybe population two like there's like four or five houses left and there's one big house and it was lived in by Wendy Cobain uh, Kurt's mom and Kim Cobain Kurt's sister it is impossible to get to the house I came out here hoping that I could maybe go up the driveway I went up a couple drives and talked to some people who live here and they said the house is deep just about half a mile back that way it's up a hill and gates so I couldn't even I just went up the first road and talked to a few people like I talked to three people and they all said the same thing and I said yeah you, she, the, the older lady lived on the property that I went to first she knew all about the house she said it's a big house now I was only she said it called it a mansion 6,000 square feet I was under the impression it was this, it was the the guy that was the main dude in the town in Bordeaux his superintendent had a house and that that was the Cobain family house now in the past like 20 years or something I knew I wasn't gonna get very far with this trying to find this house but it's not too far from another major home and that's where I'm going and that's where I'm gonna end the video and it's really cool I know I can see it from the street and yeah I was really hoping to like she said it's up a hill so you might be able to see it from the street but with all the green and look at how green she said it'd be virtually impossible to see from the road so and um security cameras and gates so let's go to the other house that we know we can see i got some cool stuff to tell you about that place So, everything I said 
we can take it back because I can see the house perfectly right now. It's gonna be hard for you guys to see it, but this was the former home of, there it is. I can match up to one picture online. I was driving by and I thought, wow, there it is. Look, you can see that same peaked roof. So this is a little invasive, but it's okay. You don't really, it's hard to find. It's a big driveway and security. I'm not going on the property at all, but that is Wendy Cobain and, Kurt, and Kim Cobain's former home. It's the best angle I can get. Wow, this is, how crazy is that? We found it, eh? There it is. Right? Oh, look, you can, there's a trail up there, so we are not the first. No. Yeah, but there are signs, private property posted. That's Johnny oh, Nirvana. Look, look. You've seen it in my other videos. Maybe we haven't met him yet, but this is my no, friend here's Johnny. The thing. Johnny Nirvana's input on this, okay? Yeah. Like we were told by these people that, you know, the people that bought this house were really private people. Now, now answer me this. Why, if you're a very private person, do you buy such a high profile house? Well, I, th I still think because it's relatives of Kurt Cobain, it's not necessarily Kurt's house or anything, but it is connected to the Cobain family. So I thought it was kind of cool. But yeah, I mean, but it's set far back. I mean, the house he bought for his mom. No, this is this is where Wendy and Kim. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, he he the estate paid for it. I'm sure because it's oh. a very nice house. No, it's a it's, it's a big one. You said mansion. You're yeah, not kidding. That, yeah, what six thousand six thousand square yeah. feet goes all the way back. But we found it. We found it. Pretty cool. That was a that was a. I thought I was gonna find it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Now onto the you big got, one. The big skills. ending. Yeah, I got a, I got a knife for something. Okay, Johnny. So this is the big location for me for all the Kurt stuff I've done in the past six days. Because this is the hardest one to figure out and I still haven't quite figured out because nobody knows for certain. There's gonna be people that tell you they know. Probably only 10 people know, and they're all related to Kurt Cobain. Mm. So I'm gonna tell you, this is called McLean Creek, right here, okay? Right here, this is McLean Creek. So, after Kurt died in 1996, Courtney Love bought a house right down here. We're gonna show you that house. Now the story goes that she, it's a famous Courtney Love abandoned Delphi house. But apparently, Wendy and, uh, Kim, Kurt's mother and sister, lived in this house. But Francis and Francis Bean did have a room in this house because we know this because somebody very closely connected to the Cobain family told us just yesterday they were they were at a estate sale at this house and they showed us pictures and unfortunately they're on a phone. She's gonna to try to get them to you. They won't be in time for this video. Remember her talking to us about the pictures? I do. Francis Bean's bedroom was all graffiti that she did herself and said it was really good. And so there's some artifacts, you'll see them in another video of mine, that she bought from the Cobain estate. And she, I showed her the picture of this house. She goes, that's, yes, of course, that's mm -hmm. the house. So it's not known if Courtney lived here full time. Well, she lived in Hollywood, of course, at the time as well. It's just more than one house. Or Wendy had that other house that we were just at and also lived here. It's very confusing. What's known is in 1999, they did have a memorial service. And was it at the other house we were just at or was it at this house? Even that you cannot, can't nail down. Now I've talked, I've done a whole video on his ashes, what happened to his ashes. But this creek runs back behind, we'll call it Courtney's Delphi house. And apparently they had a memorial service there in 1999, like I said, and Francis Bean wanted to pat, uh, put some of Chris's ashes in the creek where she played. So that's one location. And now another thing, the other reason why it gets really confusing is because Courtney Love, a few years ago, I don't know if you know this, said that Kurt's ashes were stolen from her house. It was oh. in a pink teddy bear backpack or pink teddy bear handbag. And then an Australian uh, art performer, what do you call them? Like, you know, like, you know, what do you call them? They got on stage and they do like art performances. Anyways, somebody weird said, someone like you, said, she had Kurt's ashes and she wouldn't say how she got them. And they were, but the, and then Courtney was, then about six months later, Courtney said, oh, his ashes were never stolen. But she reported them stolen. Ah. None of it make, none of, none of it makes sense. The only thing that I know is my Ithaca video about Kurt's ashes in Ithaca that made it to the Buddhist uh, Tassas, Tassas, if I think mm -hmm. whatever they called them, sorry. I'm not sure. Cause Kurt and Courtney both were Buddhist or practicing mm -hmm. somewhat. 
So this house is very famous for being an abandoned Courtney Love house and where Kurt's memorial was held possibly here or at the other house. So it's kind of, mm-hmm. and I'm telling you, I've, I've done hours. I, I'm, I'm talking a lot right now, but it's because I've done hours of re, hour, days trying to figure out all the locations of Kurt's ashes and all the houses he lived in or, or connected to him. And this is just because he didn't live here, obviously. But you're pretty sure some of them ended up in this creek. They say that they went to went for a walk behind the house, and Francis Bean put them into the little creek called McLean Creek. If you Google that, McLean Creek, Kurt Cobain stuff will come up right away. This is a creek. Let's go look at Courtney slash Wendy's slash Kim's house. Looks the like, famous abandoned house that's now somebody like living so, there. Yeah, it looks like someone. the lights are on. Oh, yeah. Someone's living there that's now. That's like me. The lights are on, but no one's home. Now, yeah, I wish I could say how that. how hard was it to get here? By the way, with no service, once yeah, once you lose service, once the GPS went out. It was, it was uh, crazy. That was yeah, insane. So yeah. it took us it took us a lot longer to get here than we thought from the last location. But let's go take a look, and we're gonna end All the right. video here. So there's the creek there, and then I'm gonna run across the street before the car comes. Oh, he's coming fast, coming in hot. The creek continues this way, McLean Creek. The house is right here. Listen, uh, Scott on tape. I, yeah. I, I was under the understanding the house Courtney lived in for a while was completely dilapidated and right. run down. And this looks... Very nice. This looks like the home of a celebrity. Right. Now, I believe... I mean, it's a nice home, but that is definitely very well kept. Yeah. So this is definitely... What I do... We were just talking about before. I rely on property records, right, to confirm. So from 1996 to 2006, roughly, definitely 1996, this is when Courtney Love bought this property. And there's videos of people going in and out of this house Mm. when it's abandoned. And there's more, there's junk everywhere, clothes, graffiti. It could have been, people say, oh, it's Courtney's stuff left behind, but it could have been the, the Cobain family stuff that's left behind. They sold a bunch of stuff and then... They had the estate sale and then left the house. But it, I believe it did go into foreclosure, so they got locked out. Now, oh. did, what, did Courtney get locked out or did Wendy and Thing? Uh, Kim, not Thing, sorry. So I, I like to be yeah. a little more thorough. I'm a little disappointed that I can't get the right answer, but I will one day. But this was, this. you'll see, uh, I'll put a little picture in here of somebody else's video and I'll put a link to their video below who has gone in and around this house back when it was abandoned. All I know is the creek continues behind and apparently they put some of Kurt's ashes in McLean Creek. But that's the famous house. It's no longer abandoned. It's a beautiful house. That's it. All right, man. All right. Yeah. So I did the first little bit all by myself up in Seattle and we hooked up to do a lot of videos together. Thank you for coming along on this last bit of the trip here. Yeah. Okay. Alright, should we give him one last one? Kurt Cobain. Kurt, Kurt Cobain. Cobain. We've yeah. been singing, we've been, we've been yeah. putting Kurt Cobain's name into all Prince lyrics all day just to have fun. Absolutely. Because Kurt, we well, both. it had something to do with that that man we saw downtown. Yeah, that was all was in purple. Almost naked, that had painted himself. Purple. Yeah, it was sort of, and it was all crusty and right. old paint that, I don't know. It was it weird, was, it was yeah. a bizarre thing. It was but, really bizarre. Even for Olympia, it was bizarre. Yeah, for Olympia. <laughs> Yeah, let's just say we're having fun singing, but we're both huge, Mm -hmm. huge Kurt fans. So for Kurt fans, we want to be able to show you something really cool connected to him somewhat. Yeah. The family lived here. Francis Bean was here. Yeah. All right. There it is. Huge fans, though. All the the respect. Much love to all you fans out there watching. Thanks for sticking around to the end. All right. Peace. Quiet down, truck. Quiet down. (laughs) Out.